Welcome to the Creative Piano Teaching Podcast, the place where teachers from around the world meet to share innovative ideas about music education. Listen and learn as we help you motivate your students, grow your income, expand your studio, and become a more creative piano teacher. Good day, everyone. Welcome back to the Creative Piano Teaching Podcast. This is episode number 114. And if you're one of my Inner Circle Piano Teaching Community members, a very special welcome to you, of course. My name is Tim Topham, your host for the show. And if this is your first time here, thank you very, very much for tuning in. Always great to have some new ears on the podcast. And uh, I can perhaps picture you driving your car, walking the dog, making dinner, cleaning the house, whatever it is that you're doing. Thank you very much for tuning in uh, and giving me a little bit of your time while you hopefully go off and do other things because that's a great way to listen to podcasts. The Creative Piano Teaching Podcast, of course, is a place where you can get weekly inspiration, ideas, business and teaching strategies to help support your teaching and grow a thriving studio. Today's show notes and full transcript are available from timtoppen.com slash episode 114. This episode of the Creative Piano Teaching Podcast is proudly sponsored by the Selviano Grand Hybrid Piano, a digital hybrid piano created by Casio in conjunction with acoustic piano manufacturer C. Beckstein. Now, you've been hearing me talk about uh, the Casio Grand Hybrid Piano for probably up to two months now. Um, And look, I'm very passionate about this instrument because I've had the chance to play it in my studio. My students have played it. I've done a lot of practice on it. And I've got to say, I'm a complete convert. The thing that I really love about hybrid pianos, of course, is that, well, you don't have to pay to have them tuned, for one. You don't have to pay to have them moved. You can use headphones and I have to use headphones a lot uh, when I practice due to my um, house here and um, I am very much a fan of uh, the price point that Casio have managed to produce this instrument at. It's a full acoustic uh, piano, grand piano action inside their digital um production box which makes it you know just the best of both worlds in my opinion so you've got the great action you've got a great sound and you've also got a number of those features which you might have seen because i did a facebook live review of this which has been going around the internet a little bit Uh, and they've also got various playing along backing tracks different pianos there's three amazingly well sampled pianos in the one instrument Um, just lots of going for it but particularly for those of you like me who don't have lots and lots of money to throw around or a huge amount of space to put a big grand piano in even if i did then this is a great option for your studio so to find out more and play one today head to soundtechnology.com.au today is a solo show and it's all about how to gain clarity avoid overwhelm and achieve success in 2018 with a little help from something called the five-day piano pivot. And I'm going to tell you exactly what that is about in just a moment. One of the things I hear more than anything else from teachers around the world is that they are overwhelmed with all the information out there. And I wonder if you feel the same sometimes. One of the solutions I'm going to offer you is this global challenge I'm going to be running in December called the five-day piano pivot and it's free and it's available to anyone who would like to join it up join up and we will be going through a little bit more of the detail about it in today's episode. So I'm going to tell you why I'm running this challenge and how you can benefit from being a part of it. As you know, I love giving away freebies and the freebie for this episode is actually something that you'll get when you register for the challenge and it is your five-day piano pivot playbook. This is uh, effectively a workbook, full color workbook, which we'll be working through each day of the pivot in order to uh, really plan out and structure what your Uh, going to be doing next year in your studio. So it's an amazingly useful planning document and you'll need to get that in order to join the pivot and get the most from it. So to grab that freebie and to join up for this challenge, I'll tell you a little bit later again this address. It's pianopivot.com. Pianopivot, P-I-V-O-T dot com. Okay, so let's just go to one of these big problems that I hear a lot from teachers and it's this issue with there being so much stuff out there. And, you know, 20 years ago, 
you might find a few piano pedagogy books on the shelves. Uh, even they were a little bit hard to come by. Uh, but you certainly didn't have the blogs, the podcasts, the Facebook groups, the Facebook chat, the Facebook pages, all combined with obviously very busy family lives. Many of us have children and the difficulties in scheduling students around ever increasingly packed student lives and conflicting engagements. And it gets to the point where people just start to go, you know what, I'm actually just going to turn off Facebook, I'm going to delete all my emails, I'm going to maybe stop teaching piano and some people might choose that and I hope they don't because it all just seems too much. So what I'd really like to do is help teachers uh, understand that it it's yes, there is a lot of information out there, but it's actually really manageable with a few tactics. But what I wanted to do was start with a um, an email that I received from a teacher. And I actually talked about this back in episode number 69, which was called Six Steps to Avoiding or Beating Overwhelm. And you can go back and have a listen to that at timtopham.com slash episode 69. Uh, and I want to talk Uh, just remind you of what the teacher said. I'm going to read out without uh, naming who it is, uh, read out the email that uh, she sent. And I'm really interested to know if you can relate to it. She said, I have a dilemma. I enjoy your podcast, etc. so much. However, I overextended myself joining three other sites as well, which I have to pay for. I'm just not able to devote enough computer time to all of you very informative and inspiring people on a regular basis. And it isn't just the money, it's the time. I get Leela Viss's 88 Keys blog. I get occasional things from Bradley Sowash and Carol Matz. Blogs and Facebooks from Eleanor Cobb, Melanie Spanswick, Jennifer Fox, uh, Diane Heidi, Noah from Bulletproof Musician, Wendy Stevens, uh, Joy tunes, etc. Then the list goes on. She's listed quite a few there. Oh, and I also bought a subscription to Piano Bench, which I haven't had the time to read. Overwhelmed? Yes. I teach full time. I have two bands, and somewhere along the line, ought to practice myself. Funny thing is, I taught for nearly twenty-five years before I ever got a computer. Then it took me a long time to even look around at all the teachers online. And in the last three years, I've spent so much time reading and looking around. And it turns out there is a lot of overlap. And yet I keep thinking, everyone's got a better idea than me. I better read this one more blog, one more email, one more article. In some ways, I'd be fine if I just unplugged from it all now. I do enjoy your stuff and I like hearing the conversations, but lordy, there's just so much. So can you relate to my listener? I certainly can and I make this stuff, right? (laughs) I mean, I try and obviously keep my finger on the pulse with both uh, a lot of piano teaching blogs and groups and also uh, for me, the business side of things, which I try and share more and more with with my Inner Circle community members, um, how to build online businesses and sell courses and uh, Facebook advertise and do things like that. So I'm keeping my finger on a lot of different um, things out there and I totally get it. Like this comment resonates with me and I know it will resonate with many of you. So what's the solution? Well, in episode number 69, I discussed a few um, ideas Prioritizing the information you need to consume is important. Setting your teaching philosophy first, I've talked about many times, uh, and it is still so, so important because if you have that direction and you know where you're headed, you'll know the information that you need to absorb and what you can leave aside. For example, there's no point listening to Um, a podcast necessarily about um, teaching preschool if that's not something you do or you're thinking of doing Uh, or if it's a blog about some great summer camp themes well unless you're about to run a summer camp then maybe that's not relevant either so it's about having that direction and then grabbing the information that you need to get there along the way Back in episode 69, I also talked about how to be more productive with less time, how to automate repetitive tasks using software, and why you should outsource some of your work and how easy that is to do these days using sites like Freelancer and Upwork. The six steps I actually went through were these ones in this order. 
prioritize health and sleep. Now, sleep and health is something that we don't often associate with feelings of overwhelm. But I can tell you what, if you are healthy and fit and active, you will naturally have a much greater tolerance for all of the information that's out there because you'll be on top of it. You'll feel more confident and you'll have more vitality and energy in order to be able to go, yeah, that's not important. That is, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. And uh, just, just take that kind of lead and control of all that information. If on the other hand, you're a little bit unhealthier, you're more lethargic and tired, then you'll probably find yourself perhaps uh, doing more absorbing of other people's content and scrolling through Facebook and things like that perhaps uh, than actually getting out there and making change and doing things. So prioritizing health and sleep is really, really important and that is going to form a part of the program for the five-day piano pivot. I'll talk to you about that in just a moment. The second step I mentioned in episode 69 was focusing on what's important, narrowing your focus. Just because there are good ideas out there doesn't doesn't mean you have to do it, okay? And it comes back to the goal that you have and the philosophy you have for teaching. It's important too when we think about uh, narrowing focus uh, that we really get clear on uh, the students that we're teaching and the goals that we have for them and also the goal we have for our whole business, Uh, and making sure that all of those pieces interlock as much as possible. Part three or uh, step number three for avoiding overwhelm in episode 69 was setting goals and developing a plan, not just for your studio but also for your life. They are thoroughly intertwined, even more so for people who go into a city office job and leave it there uh, at 5 p.m. We are absorbed in music. It is our life. It is our passion. And we often teach at home. We are surrounded by it all the time. So sometimes having a real plan that involves both your music business direction and also your life direction uh, at the same time is, is can be really useful too. Idea number four was get productive and uh, trying only one thing at a time was one of my ideas there. Uh, A little bit like testing, you know, if you change everything at once, you won't know what's necessarily worked if you get a light bulb moment. And also multitasking, you know, using social media or having a hundred tabs open on your computer and flipping between them uh, can be incredibly counterproductive. So if you really want to beat that sense of overwhelm and too much information and you have picked something that is heading toward, helping you head towards your goal, then uh, grab that and turn everything else off and focus on it. One of the most important things to do if you're trying to change something about your teaching is to try and form a habit. I've heard somewhere or other that it takes around 30 days to form a habit. If you try everything that you find online, and this goes for my stuff as well, you know, maybe you try the 12 bar blues, but you only do it for one lesson. And then you try four chord composing, you do that for one lesson. And then you try a noble beginner's idea, you do that for one lesson. If you only ever do these things once with a student, then chances are you haven't formed a habit. It takes much more than that. So the other thing I would suggest that you do, and the other reason I really recommend choosing only one thing at a time to focus on, is to is that we want to try and do a few things really well rather than try everything out once because that's just a waste of time. So I would, you know, discourage you from, you know, printing out all those great game ideas that you found but you probably won't ever use. Uh, and just focus on one thing with one student. That's what I always suggest. The fifth thing I recommended in that podcast was to automate or use software where you can to help things, uh, help you do things, I should say. So a great example is my approach to monthly billing Uh, using My Music Staff. Now, there's multiple software solutions for this, but I do like My Music Staff. And I have a blog uh, with a video uh, all about how I converted to automated monthly billing. It's not very difficult. uh, And once it's set up, you forget it. You never have to talk to parents about credit cards, uh, checks, cash, payments, anything ever again once this is set up. It is 
the biggest time saver and I recommend everyone checks it out. If you want to know about how that works, how I did it, how to calculate what you should charge for monthly lessons or you could do it for uh, term long lessons or semester lessons, whatever you want. But do automate that billing process if you can. And please, guys, stop using checks. I mean, uh, I, I know I, I think they're more common in the United States than they are in Australia. We really don't use checks at all here anymore. Uh, and I know that that would be the way every country is going to go in the future. So try and avoid using checks. It's just such a slow, laborious um, time-wasting process. Anyway, to find out more about my approach to the monthly billing and automating things like that, head to timtopham.com slash monthly and you'll be able to find out. And the last suggestion I had there was to outsource. And outsourcing just means hiring another person to do things for you. So if you do any repetitive tasks that are online in particular, you know, balancing your accounts or uh, might be some repetitive timetabling or scheduling tasks that you have to do every week that really you shouldn't be spending your time on. Someone else could easily do that. Yeah, there are people all around the world, many of whom are in uh, different countries with different rates of pay, who you can find very, very easily on a site such as Upwork. And I actually have a full video about how I use Upwork to find my own team members um, in the Inner Circle members area. It's a great help to anyone who's running a studio to give you more time and to f allow you to do things with your time that you should be doing. And that probably isn't, you know, endlessly going through spreadsheets and transferring information from here to there and that kind of thing. So with all of those ideas, I felt that teachers, I mean, I've, I mean, that podcast came out uh, 50 episodes ago or thereabouts, uh, and I'm still getting these comments. So my, my thinking is that teachers uh, might need more help. And so in the inner circle, we have something called our four-week challenges. And we run these every two to three months. And it's when teachers set goals in a number of different areas and they have four weeks to achieve those goals. It's really, it's simple in reality, but it's incredibly powerful as a result because just by setting goals, really clear goals and journaling your progress through them each week over the four weeks can have an immense impact on your ability to actually get things done. One, you're, you've got other people to help you. Uh, so you've got a sense of community and team and support around you, which is really important. Number two, just the act of stating your goals publicly is a huge driver for achieving them. And so I would recommend if you uh, haven't thought about this approach to getting things done, then this could be a great one for you. Even if you're not in the membership, that's totally cool. You can set goals yourself in other ways. And the Piano Pivot is going to be one way we can do that. So with the four-week challenges being really successful, I thought, well, look, how can I broaden this idea of the four-week challenge so that everyone could actually have a go uh, and that is where this idea has come about for this Global Piano Teaching Challenge this December 2017. So if you're lifting, listening to this after December 2017, then don't worry. If all's gone well, and I'm sure it will, then I will likely do future ones of these piano pivots. Uh, but if you are listening to this as it's coming out, then I'm about to tell you exactly how it works and how you can get involved and actually what you'll gain from it. So what is the Piano Pivot? Well, it's a five-day chance to set goals and plan your strategy for the first quarter of 2018. I like to plan my business in quarterly goals. So every three months, I set new goals, which I aim to achieve in three months' time. And I think this is a really good time frame for anyone running a small business. So what we're going to do is we're going to spend some time in December this year planning out the structures that we're going to put in place and the goals we're going to achieve for the first quarter of 2018. We're going to tackle the overwhelm by setting clear goals and working out where your direction is. And we're going to look at our own health, our teaching and our business. Now, you might be thinking, oh, Tim, this is a really bad time. December, busy end of year, everyone's tired, Christmas is coming. Well, you know what? I've chosen this time really specifically because over here in Australia, 
many of us will have a good four-week break, uh, perhaps even longer over December, January before school starts back at the start of February. And this is the perfect time to plan your studio for the coming year or, as I say, the coming uh, first quarter of the year. For those of you in other countries heading into the cold, dark depths of winter, then you still will have some time, I would hope, between Christmas and New Year. I know it can be busy, but my understanding is that for most teachers, you'll be wrapping up classes by the 20th of December, perhaps even earlier, and you won't be going back until the first week of January um, if you are, in fact, going back at that time. So the great thing is that while, yes, it's busy now, and the time frame that we're running this is the 4th to the 8th of December 2017. While I know people are busy, what I wanted to do was give them time to absorb this idea and plan it over the course of the following few weeks. One thing that I have most success with personally is starting to think about an idea and then just letting it simmer in my head. Do you, do you find that as well? Sometimes, you know, I'll have an idea for something and rather than just plan it all out and and hit go, I'll actually just, I'll make a few notes and then I'll come back to it a couple of days later and I'll have a different approach, a different feeling, a different vibe, or I might've talked to my partner about it or some friends about it and they'll give me some new ideas. So I'll have a slightly different direction. That's the kind of thing that I want to come from this uh, piano pivot and this time that we've chosen. You'll be able to, between the 8th of December when it finishes and the start of the New Year's teaching, whenever that is for you, you'll have some good time to just absorb and let things um, you know, simmer away in your brain uh, and hopefully come out with the best outcome for you rather than trying to rush it all at the start of next year or between Christmas and New Year. Now, I'm going to be teaming up with the fabulous Nicola Canton who was on last week's podcast and she's been on a few podcasts and with whom I work really, really closely. Nicola, of course, has amazing resources for teachers at her own blog, colorfulkeys.ie and also vibrantmusicteaching.com. And we're going to be going live each day of the challenge in her Facebook community. It's called the Vibrant Music Teachers Facebook group. Some of you listening will likely already be members in there. And if you don't use Facebook, don't worry because we're going to be, as long as you're registered, I'm going to be sending you the replay links that you can watch outside of Facebook anyway, okay? So don't worry if you're not a Facebook person, that's okay. But what I would suggest is that if you are a Facebook user, uh, join us live for the videos each day if you possibly can in the Vibrant Music Teachers Facebook group or watch them there because you'll then be able to see the kinds of comments that other people have left on these videos and see our discussion. And that's really, really important and helpful because again, one of the important things for achieving goals is having that sense of a group and a team of people around you to support you. So we're gonna be going live each day between the 4th and the 8th of December Uh, in Melbourne time, 8 a.m. So each day at 8 a.m. Australian Daylight Savings Time, that's Melbourne time. So for those of you in the United States, that's going to be 4 p.m. on the day before, Eastern time, Pacific time, 1 p.m. And if you're in London, that'll be 9 p.m. the night before. Okay, so what we'll actually be doing, we're going to, uh, while it, uh, we're, we're, we're talking about this starting on Monday the 4th, we're actually going to have a pre-launch, a big dreaming day the day before. So actually our first live video will be on the Sunday morning, the 3rd of December, Melbourne time, 8 a.m. So Saturday, 4 p.m. Eastern, 1 p.m. Pacific, and 9 p.m. London time on the Saturday, the 2nd of December. That will be our first session. And I'm going to go through what each day entails in just a moment. Uh, But just to remind you, if you don't use Facebook, that's totally cool. As long as you're registered, you'll get an email link to the replay page where we'll add all the videos from each of the days. So even if you can jump into some, you might you know, have an event on one of the other occasions. That's totally cool. We've tried to pick times which will cover the, as much of the world as we possibly can. And I do apologize for those of you who are in Singapore, Hong Kong, and Perth. It's going to be 5 a.m. or thereabouts your time. Um, and for those of you in Eastern time zone, it may be during your teaching. So again, apologies, but we've tried our best to find times which will hopefully suit most people around the world. And again, you'll be able to watch the replay links anyway. So 
to get most out of this challenge, try and be live for as many of those videos as you possibly can because you will get to ask questions, you'll get our answers, and you'll get the support of the whole community and the other teachers who will be taking the challenge. Now, I mentioned the freebie at the start, the playbook. Your playbook is your five-day piano pivot planning document, full-color workbook that you can download, print out, and refer to as you plan your pivot. And I think this is an important document because it will be the thing that you can refer to while you're simmering these ideas over the festive season and the document you keep referring back to at the start of next year as you integrate these ideas and you achieve your goals. You'll receive that as soon as you register for the pivot. Okay, so what is this all about? Let me take you through what's going on on each of the days so you've got an idea of how it all works. So our pre-launch day, that's December 3rd, that's Sunday, 8 a.m. my time here in Melbourne. That's the Saturday evening for you guys uh, to the west of me. Is all about dreaming big. We'll be taking you through what we're calling our blue sky brainstorm and helping you create the mindset you'll need to feel creative, to set goals and have success in the five-day piano pivot. This is going to be a really important scene-setting day um, and also that chance, which we never give ourselves, to think outside the box, clear our heads and dream about what we actually want from our studios. Or maybe we're at a point now where our studios are going so well that we need to look beyond our studio and think, well, what could I do next? So that's our dream big day on December 3rd. Now, day one, December 4th, 8 a.m. Melbourne time, that will be Sunday night over in the States and London, is all about you. There's no point planning big change in your life or studio unless you look after yourself. As I mentioned earlier in this podcast episode, health is just vital. So we're going to take a snapshot of where you're at by working through something we've called the three key areas of you. I don't want to give everything away. But day one is all about you, your health, and working out where you're actually at and where you would like to be with that. Day two, which will be Tuesday in Melbourne, is all about your students. Where are you going and what are you trying to achieve? We'll be building a picture of your ideal student, which will form the basis of the next day's look at your teaching. So to summarize so far, day one's about you because it's important to get you right before you look after anyone else. Day two is about your students, and we'll be working on that picture of the ideal student, how to get them to that ideal stage, and what you need support with to get there. And this is going to really help with that whole overwhelm feeling, because we're actually going to write down how to find the information that we need to get where we're going. So it's really, really structured. I can't wait to get stuck into this. It's going to be so good. Day three, as I mentioned, is all about your teaching. So today, in day three, we're going to help you plan the activities that will define your teaching in 2018 and help you work out where you need to spend that planning time and therefore how you're going to actually approach your teaching. What might be different? Where could you pivot your current teaching from and to that's going to really sustain and support your business and also really help with those student outcomes for your uh, students in your studio? Day four is all about your music. Yep, put your hand up if you have too much sheet music. Yeah, I thought all the hands would go up. Today in day four, which will be on the Thursday, we're going to be helping you come to grips with your music library and make the most of all the music you have by learning a few tricks to get creative with any piece. We all have too much music and we all continue to buy more music. And I put my hand up and say, I do that too. So we're actually going to take some time to plan our music library a little bit better and set aside some time over the holiday period, if possible, to actually sort out your library once and for all. So we're going to talk about some ideas around how to do that, how to structure and plan things, how to organize your music and what music is actually most important to you. If you're like me, you have shelves with, I don't know, 80% books you use once a year, if that, and 20% of the books that you use all the time. Are you like that? Are you like me? Well, we're going to get to the bottom of that and work out what is actually important in your library 
on day four. Day five, which will be the Friday, my time, Thursday in the United States and London, is all about your business. There's no point planning all of this stuff if you don't have a strategy for running the business that suits your lifestyle. Whether that's a student, a studio of five students or an academy of five locations, we're going to lay out your plan on day five for your business and make sure that you are running your business and it's not the other way around. And we're going to even include a bonus wrap-up day to help draw all your ideas together and feel confident about your next steps. The wrap-up day video it will be the most important one to try and join us live for. That'll be Friday night, Saturday morning, Friday night, uh, London, US, Saturday morning here in Australia because that will be a chance where a number of people on the challenge can actually tell us what they've learned, what their struggles are, uh, what they've achieved already, all of those kinds of things. And I, I can just tell it's going to be a really uh, supportive atmosphere. It's going to be really inspiring and encouraging for other teachers. Uh, so do try and make it to that bonus wrap-up day, which will be our special you know, uh, extra day at the end. So how does this sound? What do you think? Do you think this is going to be helpful for you? Let me just recap. Day one is about you. Day two is about your students. Day three is about teaching, your teaching. Day four is about your music. And day five is about your business. Numbers, goals, all the things that you need to think about when it comes to running your business. And if you've uh, perhaps not thought too much about your business um, but know that you probably should, knowing your figures, knowing your profit and loss and income and how much money you should be spending on your repertoire and uh, professional development, all that kind of stuff, then that will be a, an amazingly useful day for you. Now, all of this, of course, is 100% free. How good is that? No cost to anyone and all you have to do to become a part of the 2017 Piano Pivot is head to pianopivot.com. How easy is that? You don't even have to use and try and spell my name. So pianopivot.com, have a look through that if you'd like to and just click the button that says, I accept the challenge. You'll receive then uh, information about where to download your five-day Piano Pivot playbook and you will get emails in the lead up to when we start and also information about how to access those replays when you uh, miss a live video. So I hope this sounds exciting. I am really, uh, really stoked about it and I can't wait to get started actually. Uh, I've been planning this for a long time uh, and I've only now been able to put it into action with, as I said, the help from uh, Nicola Canton. Um, and I'm really looking forward to working with her really, really closely on this one. Um, but look, as you know, my passion is supporting you guys as teachers to become better teachers, to have stronger businesses and to enjoy what you're doing because I know that will pay off in more and more kids around the world enjoying piano and playing piano and enjoying music and hopefully doing it for the rest of their lives. So if this little challenge can help you get to that point in your business, then I'll feel 100% that I've been successful in my own. All right, that's it for today's episode. Uh, I can't wait to see you on the Piano Pivot. It starts December 4, official start day. But remember, we've got that big sky planning day on December 3rd, uh, Melbourne time. Okay, so sign up now at pianopivot.com and uh, I will look forward to seeing you on next week's episode, which is all about imposter syndrome. This is an episode that I've been, I've been wanting to put together for since I started actually um, because it's another um, issue that I get emailed about a lot. Imposter syndrome, what is it, what causes it, and how to combat it will be the subject of next week's podcast. I hope you can join us then. I'm Tim Topham. This is the Creative Piano Teaching Podcast and thank you so much for listening. Ladies and gentlemen, 
that will conclude this evening's entertainment. Oh, thank you. Thanks for listening to the Creative Piano Teaching Podcast. We'd love to help take your teaching to the next level as a member of our supportive community. Use the coupon Piano Podcast for $100 off an annual membership of Tim's Inner Circle today. To find out more, head to timtopham.com forward slash community.